<laughs> Matt's webcam died. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am Jeff from Fuller and Brody Works, and that is Matt Enderley from Pat Frey. And today we are with the Embroidery Nerd. And hopefully we have some entertaining stuff. I'm not quite sure. We'll find out when we get there. Uh, mild cursing, maybe. We'll see. Some adult language. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so today I have the post bed. Set up behind me so I can sew a couple of patches to some hats. Um, Matt is lasering, so we might be able to see some patches get laser cut out. And I actually, I applicate mine onto uh, some wet lawn stabilizer. Uh, so I actually have a couple I can cut out too, um, because I need to cut them out before I attach them. And we're going to try maybe to do one without spray adhesive. I haven't decided yet. My wife doesn't like me to use spray adhesive in the house, so generally I go do that in the garage. But that's mm. a set of stairs and over there. And I don't know if Matt can uh, entertain for that long while I'm gone. We'll find out, right? <laughs> you got your little so, minion there. Let's jump in the comments. We have Barb here watching from North Central Minnesota. Hello. We have Penny from North Carolina. How hello, Penny, to you. And we have John from Kentucky. Hello. And Amy says hello to my almost favorites. I am your favorite, brother. I think she's just mad because she's not getting the star. Oh, well. It's like she's she only like two and a half hours away from me. She could totally drive here and make one. It's, <laughs> it's worth it. If I shipped it, it would take like two weeks to get there. But if you drove up here, it'd be two and a half hours, I swear. Um, my last package that I've got coming from California has been all, I, I think it's going on a 50 state tour before it comes to Iowa. Because it feels like it's hit like 12 of the wide states so far uh, on both sides of the, the country. So um, we have back here. Hello, how are you? And so I don't know, Matt, if you want to pop up. I guess I could show the hats that I'm using once I figure out. Well, I have my helper. Hi. <laughs> Hi, helper. What's the, your helper's website? Huh? What's your helper's website? Oh, it is bjjhats.com with an emphasis on dot com. <laughs> oh, so today I've got some, uh, these are caps, they're from Cobra Caps, uh, Cobra Cap Company, and they're just Velcro back and structured um, for Bill. And yeah, that's, I've got four of those. I figure I'll do one or two. If you guys have questions about it, we can go ahead and uh, ask those while we're doing it. Uh, Debbie Jean says, good evening. Oh, I guess I should do this. There we go. Debbie Jean says, good evening, everyone. So I'm trying to outline some clip art. So you guys are on TV tonight. Awesome. Uh, so I guess I'll jump over and I'll share my other camera here and I'll cut out the patches um, and just kind of finish the sides. And then I can, uh, I'll, I'll drop out and go spray them with spray adhesive and you can pull up what you want. How's that sound? That sounds like a plan. It, it's a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan, but it's it's, it's plan. like the D plan. Like it's like the D plan. Not the backup, but yeah. Not the backup. So we we'll do right. that. There we I go. Got it. I got it. So uh, I've got two hoops sitting. I think no, nope, they're not on screen. There you go. I've got two hoops sitting here. Um, get that light. So they're super fancy nerd patches for like the embroidery nerd. Uh, this is actually the same. Uh, it's not the exact same design as the uh, the t-shirt uh, that we're going to be announcing. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I messed that one up. But uh, I've got two of them sitting here and I've got the, uh, I've got some that we made out of Teal, which is what Adam's favorite color was. Well, he picked it. 
like it's two out of gold. So your your cameraman is messing with your camera and it just zoomed in on your <laughs> on your nose. That's why I have I'm gonna fire him. <laughs> hey, it was an accident. <laughs> Oh, it just, <laughs> it just kept zooming I, in. It's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to see. Or something. And then I and then I was trying to figure out how to get it. Uh-huh. So you put it on my nose. Got it. All right. So Sounds these like you're fired. are an old Willie. Uh, I laser cut the shape, and then I applicate them down onto Weblon. Um, so it's a nylon material. It's pretty thin. I don't know if you can see through it. I can. Uh, and now I'm just going to cut them out. I'm going to cut roughly like a 32nd of an inch to maybe a 16th of an inch or closer um, along the border. And if you zoomed in on my nose again, kid, I'm going to duct tape you to the wall. Ooh, that that would be, that would be interesting. interesting. So I just cut around the outside edge. And I don't have to be super accurate, you know, just kind of close because I'll end up um, hitting it with heat. So I really like this method because you get a really nice clean edge uh, along the side um, and you don't really have to cut the fabric. And he's laughing. It just makes me nervous. So I cut that out. He hit my lighter from me. I don't know why he's laughing so much. So we have so a couple anyways, of now I'm just going to come around the outside edge real quick with a, with a lighter. And because the, the stabilizer is made out of nylon, it sucks back um, right up against the thread. But it doesn't actually, like it melts at a lower temperature than the thread. So I can just kind of whip it around and... Uh, as long as I'm paying attention to what I'm doing, I don't actually cut the thread. So I should have used black bobbin, but I didn't. So we'll go ahead and keep going. Matt, I can't see if there's any questions, so let me know if there's questions. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know where you left off on the comments because I wasn't paying attention. But uh, I'll just go ahead and start somewhere um, as we super zoom into your patch there. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, we got Bevy Jean. I think we're going to pretend this is the first time we read it. If it's not, then it is now. Uh, Bev Jean said she just waved back to Adam. Hospital funny. Did you see her, Adam? No. No. Well, maybe you should pay attention. <laughs> uh, then we have Eric saying good work on the multicam setup. Looking good. And as my mouse legs, we have Chris saying legit. Uh, seen every beard hair in high def. I can attest to that. It was almost like it was 4K. Uh, Cindy King saying, good evening. And then Barb saying, hi, Sydney. Uh, Sydney saying, Jeff, Joanne Banco won a sewing machine on the site I told you about earlier. I wish I won a sewing machine, but... I like mine. I don't need a new one. So, someone I know is in the market for a new sewing machine with all of the bells and whistles. Might be me. And then I got a question saying from Baby Jean. So, I know I asked dumb questions, but did you hit the lighter before the patch attached? So uh, the blanks I cut out with the laser, and I just applicate them down onto the stabilizer and ran the edge. Um, and then I cut them out with just some scissors, and then I ran the lighter around the edge, which sucked up that Weblon stabilizer. So that was just, I had to make these patches to sew them onto hats. Um, now that they're done, uh, I can spray adhesive them and then... We'll stitch them onto a hat. As long as my nose isn't on screen in high def. Do That's you approve of not that. putting my nose in screen in high def? I approve. Okay. He approves of not being. <laughs> there we go. Um, 
for the tax plan. I, yeah, I believe I believe I've answered the question. If not, let me know. And that's caught up, right, Matt? Yep. And then Sydney saying she can always use more machines. I mean, who couldn't use more machines? When you run out of space, then you need more space. So you build a he or she shed. Yep. So Cindy asks, are you using the post bed machine? Uh, yep, I will. So I'm going to be sewing them off with the post bed machine. Um, I was going to set up a file for the uh, the embroidery machine, but I ran out of time. So um, if we run out of if we run out of things to do on this slide, we'll go ahead and we can start setting up a file for uh, for attaching it with the embroidery machine. So I'm going to drop out for a second, Matt. I'm going to go spray one of these patches, and I'll then we can attach it to the hat and sew it down. Okay, we'll time you. All right. I mean, yeah, never mind. Ah, he literally dropped out. So now it's just me all alone. What are we going to do? Um, so we are going to actually start a new segment on the live stream. Um, kind of we're... We pick a random page of a random person in the group or a company page or something on Facebook, and we plug them in. No charge, nothing, just out of sheer appreciation and other fancy words that make me sound really smart. So I'm going to go ahead and click this wonderful button and this other button. There we go. Here we have a um, slide that shows... Cabin Dash, they are the company with Filtech. They make all the bobbins that we all love so much, uh, a bunch of stabilizers and things. Um, so the idea was that everyone can just go to the link on screen and you just go to the page and like and follow it. And then maybe in a future video, your page gets thrown up here if we randomly select it, or I don't know exactly how we're going to actually select them. So it'll be interesting. But um, yeah, I picked Happen Dash today because they've been really helping me out, uh, trying to switch a lot of my threads to them because they actually are certified for like military threads. So that's helpful for me. Everyone loves their bobbins. They're really great um what else yeah it's really stand-up company so go ahead and give them a like and i thought jeff would have been back because now it's just gonna be me rambling but um yeah habendash.com uh you can go there you can sign up get a um like a wholesale account and it's pretty dope so uh See, Jeff is back, so I'm going to go ahead and add him in. I wasn't back. Whether or not he's actually back or not, he's not back, apparently. I'm not here. Even though we see you. Shh. We pretend. All right. We'll go ahead and bring this puppy back in. Uh, yeah, and I was going to grab some. This uh, one. And not me. No one wants to see me that big. So we're going to yeah. shuffle things around. And we got a question. Drum roll, please. Not going to do that because it'll be really loud. From Chris saying, side note to embroidery, where's the best place to look, learn about how to price embroidery work? Is there something online that helps you learn? Um, there was a calculator that I made a while ago. I don't know why I'm mentioning it because it's no longer around. Um, but I feel like the best way to do it is just find out what your costs are, that every little cost that goes into your patch, or not your patch, but your embroidery, watching Jeff work meticulously on a patch. Um, make sure that you're covering your investments and then do market research to see what your customers are gonna pay for. Like mine, I was always trying to sell my patches for like these ones for like six bucks each. Uh, just to get sales, but now I have too many because obviously people are like, yeah, $6 a patch, that's easy. And I'm getting the same amount of orders, same quotes and everything, but I'm charging $10 or $12 each. Makes me more money, still get the sale. Just got to figure out what works for your market. You might lose a sale, but 
for every sale that's lost, there's hopefully another one. Wise words from myself. From Matt? Yep. All right. So um, I went and used the embroiderer's uh, favorite tool called Super 77. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't pop that. <laughs> it, it does not do well for your lungs. No, which is why I'm not allowed to spray it in the house. I spray it um, in the house anyways. But <laughs> but this is my room. This is my basement. If you guys haven't ever seen it before, it's, it's pretty messy, which is why it's my room. So... The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold the hat band out. And because we're stitching it on a post bed machine, we can actually go like right down to the bill. Um, but we don't necessarily want to. Uh, it, as you guys can see, this line that runs across the front of the hat right here that they sew in, that actually reinforces the, um, the sweatband. And so that runs through the sweatband. So depending on how the hat's con constructed, and what materials they use, there's going to be a little bit of a lip right here. And that you're not ever going to be able to get around. Um, it's the same in embroidery. You can embroider really, really low. Like I went pretty low on this hat. Uh, and if I would have went any lower, and I could have, I would have started sewing into the sweatband. And so that's really what I want to avoid. I want to make sure that I'm going to avoid sewing into the sweatband. So I'm basically just kind of checking out back here to see how far down I can go. By pushing on the backside. And feeling it with my finger on the front. So I can go about right there in height. And so I'm just going to set this patch down on the hat. And I'm going to just eyeball it <laughs> about where it's centered. And I'm going to make sure that when I do push it down, that I'm happy with where it's at. So I'm happy with where that is. And now I'm just going to sit here and kind of press it for a second. Because what's going to happen is the second that I start sewing on this, that patch is going to want to move. Now, in the past, I've used uh, carpet tape to hold down patches. Um, just cut it inside of the border. So basically, it just covers the embroidery. Uh, but it doesn't come all the way out to the edge. And I've done that before in the past. But when I ran out of uh, tape... I didn't buy any more. I forgot to. So we're using the embroiderer's secret weapon, the Super 77, which uh, actually I, when I applique these down, I spray the Super 77 between the Twilly and the uh, the nylon stabilizer as well. So um, when you're doing embroidery, you want to start from the bottom up and the center out. I don't really need to do that with sewing a patch to a hat. I just need to be cautious when I do it. Now, this machine has a regular presser foot on it. Uh, this started as a roller foot uh, that I converted over um, to a regular presser foot. Now, one of the conversions that happened with that, if you're running a roller foot, is you're only going to have one tooth on the feed dog, and I have three, three rows of teeth, I should say. So that was a large reason of why I converted that over because it's going to grip more on the bottom. Now I'm going to look at my stitch length. I'm going to turn it around to a three millimeters. Uh, forward is good. And I think I'm just going to start right in the top center. Make sure I fold out that presser, or not the presser foot, but fold out the, uh, the sweat band. I'm going to come right about there. And I like to have my tail, so I tuck my tails underneath the, uh, the presser foot because I want that to hold it down. If I didn't have that there, I would have to bump that or actually hold those back with my hand, and I don't like to do that. So I went ahead and dropped an initial stitch in and I'll let it go forward. I'll go backwards a little bit to lock it. And now I'm going to just move forward along that inside edge. My light's not great of that patch and sew it down. 
Hey, so when you get some time, we got a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, so the first one is what model, oh, I guess I can click it. Uh, here we go. Uh, Barb is asking what model is the post bed machine you are using? So this is a 228R. Um, it, I, I ended up buying it from somebody local. They bought it from sellingmachineplus.com. Uh, and they were going to use it for leather and they just never really used it. So I was able to pick it up from them. Um, but it's a standard single needle lock stitch with a, uh, it, it originally, like I said, was a uh, roller foot and roller feed. And that's a console, right? Yeah, it is a console. That's correct. Okay. And then we got Sydney asking, I thought Super 77 was too tough of an adhesive for sewing. Uh, she says she uses it for the screen printing department and they have a hard time finding it. Um, Super 77, I try not to use it on um, when I'm using needle stuff because, yeah, it does get gummy, but yeah. You said you're using it to kind of laminate your twill and your, your stabilizer, right? Yeah, you have to get it before it dries um, completely, and then it's okay. So I, I've never had an issue running it that way. Uh, it does kind of gum up your needle a little bit, but I can honestly say that I've laminated patches with Super 77 and done thousands of them. Um, and... I actually let my needles go a little farther than I probably should before I change them. But I've never really had that any issues. All right. And then she also asked, uh, so, uh, so, uh, why sew your patch instead of adding heat press film so you could just heat press the patch on? So you can heat press hat patches onto hats. Uh, if you have a really good heat press, it works well. Um, if you have a, uh, I'm going to just call it an Amazon special, which is what I have. Same here. Um, it buckles that front seam when you sew it. So this front seam right, or when you press it, so this front seam right here will actually buckle in and it'll crease and you'll see that it doesn't look as good. Um, other than that, I'm just, in general, I'm a fan of sewing them on uh, because I heat can fail. Um, I mean, stitching can fail too, but you've got more of a chance that your heat adhesive is going to fail uh, than you do that your stitching is going to fail. So that would be my primary reason that I sew them on because um, I'm in Iowa. I'm not even in a hot state and I've had just by accidentally leaving something in the car, I've had it where um, that heat adhesive has failed. So that would right. be my primary reasons. I don't know if you have any, Matt. I mean, I haven't done either, so. Well, I mean, you sew your Velcro onto your patches, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, for that, I I hit it with, uh, I, take, I cut all the Velcro out and I have a Chipotle catering box down there that I lay them all in. And then I just spray the Super 77 on. I kind of go a little thicker than probably need to. But um, and then I close the lid, let it sit for like a minute or two. And then I pull them out and I stick the patch on it, line it up. And then I can go marrow it. Um, and even with that marrowing it, I don't have an issue with it. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's not really gumming up the needle on the, the marrow, marrow machine now that I think about it. But um, yeah. And then another question. Uh, Cindy says, is there a reason to start in the center top? Um, I like to be, and that's mainly because I don't have to deal with the sweatband down here uh, where it's stuck down really well with the Super 77. I'm not really worried about um, about the shifting that you're going to get that you do with embroidery because it, it's pretty well attached all the way across. 
um, at least temporarily. And so the main reason I start up here is just so I don't have to mess with the, uh, the seam or the sweatband while I'm doing my lock stitches. Okay. And then, sorry, I'm trying to multitask. All right. And then she asked, or she said there's an adhesive for embroidery. She gets it from Gunold, but she doesn't remember the number offhand. I'm pretty sure that's Gunold's 505. Um, the spray? Yeah. Oh, or no, it's K50 or something. K500 or something like that. Because I know I have uh, their Goody Stick, which is basically a double sided adhesive tape for embroidery. Yeah. Um, I don't like to use that a ton where, when I'm actually embroidering. So like if I was going to embroider this, I'd put it around the outside edge because that can pull adhesive up to the front. And I've had it do that before. And I mean, heat press it and it goes away, but that's just a little extra step that you have to do in there that I'm not really all that excited for doing. Yeah, I've, I had the, uh, the Gunnold stuff. It didn't seem to be as tacky as I wanted. I don't remember what kind it was so i actually yeah, i know it's a lot more expensive for this but this stuff just get it at walmart the spray and bond works great for anything like when i'm doing uh my military name patches i float them on a tearaway stabilizer i just spray it with this pretty quick and they stick just long enough for that and it, it comes off if you get it on yourself pretty nicely so it's not too bad but yeah. Um, Penny is asking, what size needle and thread? Oh, boy. <laughs> About this big. <laughs> and that's not your standard uh, thread either. That's a different text, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So this is a... 100 size needle is what I'm running. Um, bobbin thread is a Tex 40, I believe. And the uh, the thread here, the black thread is Tex 40. I know that one for sure. Um, so for those of you that don't know, uh, hats are actually sewn together with Tex 40 thread. So that's the standard thread that they use on all the seams. And the bill, when they sew them together, is a Tex 40. No more questions? Got it? Yep, we got, well, we have Vimla from, saying hi from New Zealand. And Jason saying hi from New Zealand. Number two. So... There's the sew out in high definition, not dad's nose. There we go. Almost. I can't look at that and do this. And Adam, Adam you guys are not working okay. together. <laughs> there we go. So there's the, the sew. You can see I used the black thread around the black border. You can't really see the uh, the thread at all. Um, to sew that down. And I don't really have to worry about it coming off. It's not going to. It's on there pretty well. Um, yeah. There we go. Did you uh, marrow that one too? Uh, I did not. So, because um, you guys saw me, you saw me cut it out from the hoop. Oh, duh. So that was that was my border that I put on um, to make sure that it would. Uh, it would look narrowed. Um, I did think about narrowing them, to be honest with you. Uh, but then I was going to set up a file on the embroidery machine to sew them down. Um, and you can, I'm just more accurate with the uh, with the embroidery machine than I am with the marrow machine. Um, I have that messing up, but I'm really good about, at that. <laughs> so you you grab more comments because i'm not sure where you're at with them okay right here barb uh so she's used double uh double face tape like used for canvas work for holding patches in place i had something similar um except the stuff i got was like way too 
thick or something. Um, like it came on this big old roll, but it's it's way too thick and it was way too noticeable and it is very gummy to the scissors. So I was like, yeah, that's gonna go in my drawer and never come back out until I throw it away or something like that. But um, yeah, I thought of getting like an actual like scotch tape that's double sided, but I don't know, Super 77 is way too easy because it's done. Yeah. I mean, it is like I just walked up there and I sprayed it, and you have to wait what, like four seconds, five seconds, it starts yeah. to get tacky. And or, yeah, um, if they had a like a blueberry or a strawberry flavored or scented one, we don't want flavor because then you'd be eating it. We need scented, yeah. Uh, Cindy's saying, I was thinking more seeing uh, where you started sewing the patch, trying to be more hidden of where you start. So that's actually something that uh, that these borders help with when you do a non-standard border, like a not not a, just a satin. When you do just a satin and you're running, you really have to be right on the edge of that, uh, or else you're going to see it. Um, but with these, I'll bring this over here. But with this, the way this border is set up, and and the other ones that can be done like this, you have a lot more. You can fall inside of that primary stitch line or outside of that primary stitch line and you're not going to see it um, because it's already got that stitch line that that runs so you, you give yourself a little bit more leeway that you don't have to be right exactly on the edge and you're not going to see it um, and it's the same with a marrow patch you have a, a bit of room that you can drop a, uh, a stitch right Matt yeah so that's that's why I do that. And then the starting and stopping, if you do your lock stitches well and you really make sure that you're just on the inside of that, you don't see your lock stitches. Um, and in fact, like I'm looking at this and I can't really even see the stitch that I put around the outside edge. Um, but there we go. So... Okay. And then looks very nice. I agree. I think we all could agree it was pretty easy. I think it's a little better than having to hoop it up on a embroidery machine just to run a simple run stitch. Plus, yeah, then you, I mean, you have to do your your under. I don't know if you yeah, call you have it. Have to throw down the universal underlay and line it all up, and you're using stabilizer and you know that I I know people can hoop a hat really fast. Um, but I can kick one of those out. I, I was trying to go slow. <laughs> I, I can really push them out when I need to. So, uh, okay. Then we got Penny saying, are you just stitching inside the border? Yeah. He just said he is yep. stitching like as close as he can or on top of the very edge of the marrow or the simulated marrow so that it's hidden. Yeah. Um, Let's see, Cindy, when you sew it on, do you sew the border? Oh, yeah, we just talked about that. Just Yeah, so just when, I, when I put the, the the border on and I applicate it down, it's like 85% of that border has fabric underneath it, and then that other 15% doesn't. So, yeah, I did that right, 15, 85, 15, yeah. So um, – there's plenty of twill in there that it's not gonna um, that it's not gonna move, and like I said, I can I can fall on either end of that, and it, it does okay. So, um, Barb says I use eighth or quarter inch double face tape. I've bought in, uh, two inch carpet tape before and used that. This is two inches tall, um, so I would trim it down just a little bit. But I I really like to have a lot of. Uh, a lot of the patch stuck down because the more that you can stick it down, the less that you're going to get outside of that border. And when I when I buy patches, because um, I don't always make them all, uh, I'll ask the companies that I get them from to put a peel and stick backing on them. So if these patches were made overseas, I'd ask them for a peel and stick backing so I could just peel that off, stick it down and so. Neat. <laughs> okay, I'll click the next one. Penny saying Springfield Leather sells a half inch double sided basting tape. Holds really well. I just use it on some leather patches. I think that might be something that would be really 
easier or a little cleaner than using adhesive spray all the time. But yeah, Sydney again, Wawak. Hopefully I got it right. It sells a double sided tape again. Another type for another. It's weird. They're all for leather, but I want twill. Compatible. <laughs> Vimlo saying, where do you purchase your hats from? Please, it's very difficult to get them here in New Zealand. Hmm. If there was only a company that made hats. <laughs> so the only thing that I, I mean, the only thing I can really say about that is the companies that I get them from are all in the U.S. So it's going to be hard to get them in New Zealand, too. Because um, it's either like these ones are Cobra Cap. There's uh, SS Active Wear, Sanmar. That's where I get the majority of my hats. Um, Carolina Cap. Um, there's a couple others in there. I just can't remember off the top of my head. But they're all, they're either a U.S. distributor distributor or a U.S. manufacturer. And that's where I get my hats from. And I don't know if that would help if you're in a different country. I would say maybe just quit embroidery altogether and just import a bunch of hats and become a hat distributor if there's no one in your market or area for it. There is that. I, I know a company that does manufacture them in China. It's the uh, the minimums. They really become an issue. You know, I don't need a 40-foot container of hats. Well, I, I would like a 40-foot container of hats. I'm pretty sure my wife would kill me if a 40-foot container of hats showed up. But. That's your new he shed. Just your machines are going to be a little loud in there. Just say, put it in the back, and then when I use enough hats out of it that uh, I can fit a machine in, oh. just start moving in. Get a mini excavator and make a bunker out of it. What do you even know? <laughs> this hopefully doesn't flood. But uh, all right, uh, we got Fred yeah. saying he joined. It's good. It is good to have you back. Uh, luckily, you're doing better. Um, Baby Jean looks really good. Food for thought. I'm thinking. And then I don't like how this covers the the. the comment when I'm hovering over it. Just to be back. Okay. And then we have Barb saying to Sydney that she makes bags and wallets through the Sailrite Fabricator. Those those are pretty expensive, aren't they? Or nice. They're heavy duty machines. That's what I'm Sailrites, they're pretty beefy machines. They're walking foots. Um, I actually have you can't see it over my shoulder, but I have a Thompson uh, P201, which is actually the sewing machine that Sailorite was based off of. So when I need parts for it, I end up getting them from Sailorite because <laughs> they don't make the Thompson parts anymore, but they're that close that I can just swap them out. All right. And then Vimla saying, thank you. Shipping in New Zealand is so expensive. I have never done hats and would love to learn, although I have a Baradin with hat stuff. Well, sounds like you got the right machines and right equipment. Yeah, I just got to find a distributor. I don't know if you can do something like Alibaba or um, how that works for, I mean, I've, I've never been to New Zealand yet, but. Yeah. Uh, um, one thing that I was doing when I first started doing hats is. Uh, every time I went to the store, I would go hit the clearance section. And when they would clearance off hats, I would get them. Um, and that's like, I, I started with being able to buy uh, hats for like a dollar, a dollar fifty, you know, when they're clearanced out. Um, whether, whether it's sporting goods or whatever, that, that's where I was able to get a lot of the hats that I wanted to practice on. And so then when I was, a, I was able to and got comfortable with it, I was able to start buying hats a little more expensive because I was confident that I wasn't going to have to throw them away. Yeah, it's a good way to get some cheap ones too. And if you do screw up a hat, like say Jeff screwed up his hat with the embroidery placement there, he still has the whole other half of the hat to do or mess up or whatever. So yep. just because you screw up one panel doesn't mean you can't use it for testing. Same with shirts. And if it's in the right spot, you can always sew a patch over it. And there you go. <laughs> or you could cut it out and do something fancy. Where is oh, that? Yeah, I have that? He's wearing it. It's easy for me to point at him. <laughs> so 
This is actually a reverse applique hat. So the uh, you can see the fabric that was appliqued on the inside there. Super fancy. He likes it. He's been wearing it's that. It's really cool, especially knowing the the godfather of reverse applique. <laughs> Don't inflate his ego. He'll be, he'll come. I, I think you're talking about um, Adam. <laughs> Don't inflate Adam's ego. He'll, he'll come in here with a big grin on his face. He's already got a big, big kind of smirk. You're going to zoom in on my nose. I can feel it. All right. And then uh, I'm going to bring up this comment from Cindy asking, can you show us that machine? Yeah, so, that's the PW201 okay. she wants to see. I'll, I'll go ahead and bring that one up once I remember what button I was. I have the comment pulled up. So the thing I really like about it is it's in a case. Like a, I mean, it's he a lot heavier than a sewing machine, but it's in a sewing machine case. Can you zoom out far enough to see that? Not really. I'll, I'll slide it over here. So it's just a standard sewing machine, um, locking foot, which is really nice. The motor is a little bit beefier and it actually has a gear reductor reduction on it so that it, it can get a little bit more torque. But um, I ended up purchasing this from uh, Cobbler, the shoe people. So that's what he was using to sew shoes together. And I was able to pick that up from him and I've been using it for Anything heavier, Cordura, that I need to, um, that I need that walking foot for, because that can really make a difference in some projects. Now I'll put the lid back on it. And, uh, oh, that side too. Because it is fairly heavy, and I don't want to leave it on that table. All right, so hopefully that took care of that question. Um, yeah. Adam, <laughs> zoom out. I zoom in. Matt, take me off. I'm going to fire everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what about showing us the uh, the post bed and why that's actually different from the regular uh, like sewing machine? Because you could technically do that on a regular sewing machine. Couldn't you? It's just going to be Atrocious. So yeah, um, if you pull that camera back up, so this is a is it up? Yep, we are. So this is a post bed machine because it has this post right here. The bobbin actually sits up here on the right side of the needle, um, and these are really really nice for doing uh, cylindrical items. Um, this is actually the machine that they use to sew the sweat brand, the sweat band and the brim onto a hat. Um, and it's really nice because you can drive it here. It can rotate all the way around uh, and there's no real obstruction. You know, the brim doesn't hit anywhere. So you can really get all the way around it. I know some people that will sew on um, with cylinder bed machines to sew patches on. I'm not a big fan of those because you end up flattening the hat out a little bit like this. So if you were to do this on a flatbed home machine, which I have and I don't recommend it, um, you can. I just don't recommend it because it's not fun. Uh, what happens is, is you end up crushing this down like this to be able to get the patch on. And you end up moving that fabric around like that and you get ripples in it. And after you're done... Um, you'll end up having two creases right here that'll come from here and go out to the corners uh, on the actual structured part itself, which then you have to hit with some heat and really kind of massage those out. Sometimes you can get them out and sometimes you can't, but if you're able to get them out, that's great. Um, but because of the way the post bed is set up with the vertical post here, I don't have to worry about those creases um because i'm not actually really creasing this at all when i sew it and if i just pull this on here bring the sweatband out and pull it on like that you can see how when i move this around it's not 
there's no more deviation or less deviation than when you sew um, on the embroidery machine. So it's really, really good for not getting creases and keeping it even. And Matt's camera died again. Uh, questions? No? Let's uh, uh, Barb asks or said that she has the Thompson mini walking foot, which is on many boat tops, covers, and fixed sails. Um, and then, yeah, I got Sydney saying, Jeff, I'm loving that machine. I guess I am having machine envy post bed too. And then. Uh, Bevy Jean saying, wow, I've never seen a post-bed machine. So how much do they run? So you can get this post-bed, which is pretty basic. Um, you know, I have to do the manual lock stitches uh, and trim the threads. Um, but I want to say this one runs about $1,300 new. Uh, and that's usually shipped to your door. Uh it does not have the oil pan. So like my Jukies, they have oil pans that I put oil in and it just pumps it around. This one does not have that. I have to oil all the oil points um, periodically and usually right before I use it to make sure that I'm not running it dry. But it doesn't have underneath, it doesn't have an oil pan. It's got a drip pan. So if anything drips, it catches it, but there's no oil pan. Go ahead. And then, um, let's see. Cindy's saying, Jeff, did you see that you can use regular thread on a post bed? You can. So the thread that I'm using, it's not embroidery thread. It's um, This is Tex 40, but not 40 weight. So Tex 40 is about four times thicker than embroidery thread. Embroidery thread. It's pretty close to what you get with, uh, with regular sewing thread. Um, I, before I started, I got the official hat thread and I use air quotes there. I would use the Mara 100, the Guterman Mara 100 thread, um, was what I was using to, uh, to sew with. And you can use that on the post bed or the Jukies. Um, both Jukies that I have set up are running, uh, Tex 40. All right. And then um, Becca's saying, nice machines, Jeff. So, Thank you. Okay, you have quite a few machines there now. Yeah, well, this one's Adams. <laughs> and the double needle is Adams. And the can single we, needle and the walking foot are mine. And the marrow. Can we uh, pan to see them? Oh. Maybe. We'll see. So... I might even be able to walk over there a little bit. Adam's in charge of the Zoom, so kill me. Um, so that would be the double needle right there. Uh, it's got automatic lock stitches and thread trim, which is really nice. It's set up with a bias um, to do uh, basically just to take the inside of hats. And over there, we've got the Juki single needle. Um, and it's just a single needle lock stitch machine. Uh, pretty similar to Matt's, but without the fancy stuff. And then I've got the marrow machine over there. And the Thompson is underneath the table. I usually keep the Thompson underneath my sewing table. Unless I need it for something. So maybe we'll see. Hopefully that didn't make everybody sick. Yeah, I'm feeling it. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead, bring that down, bring all of it back up. Go ahead and uh, Sydney saying, I use regular thread on my leather and cork bags. I know there's lots of other threads out there. Uh, I was pretty shocked when I found out that there is something called rayon. Um, when I was like, oh, Madeira, that's what everyone uses. I'll go buy me some of them. And like, oh, classic. It's classic. That's what I need. And it turns out, no, rayon and classic. Well, those are the same thing, but um, yeah, it didn't work for my purpose. And I was like, Madeira sucks, but that's not the case. It was operator error sucks. So 
I know that was kind of a tangent, but that's what I'm here for, tangents. I keep you around for that. Uh, so I think we're due for another little shameless plug here. Um, so if you guys haven't seen in the Discord, which is awesome, by the way, I don't know if I've mentioned that enough in past lives. Oh, man, uh, long. While you do that, I'm going to run, go spray another batch, and I'll show one more on. Got it. Okay. I will plug you out, or you will do that. Okay. And it's just me again. Hello there. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to bring up this little link right here. Uh, so this is our URL shortener. So if you go to embnerd.com slash webinars, it'll take you to our store page, which actually I guess I could have just did this over here. Share screen. And what is this called? Webinars allow and stream. Okay, throwing it up here. Okay, so you can see it, all of our webinars that we have. Um, for example, the three puff. There's three parts. Fantastic webinar. Learned. I learned a lot of things, um, and I can always go back and watch them later. Don't have to watch it live, which is awesome. Um, and then blending on how to blend um, like this apple here is fantastically digitized, but there's only like five colors in it. Well, there's more than that, but it's not like 20 colors, which makes it, it looks like there's 20 colors in real life, but there's not, it's fantastic. And then Justin's text talk. Um, so if you see down at the very bottom of the screen, there's a code happy pie day. Um, I set it up for the code because we appreciate you guys. So yesterday was Pi Day. Some people live in the future, different time zones. So we're giving you till tomorrow to use the code. Um, and it gives you 31.14% off of every webinar you get. So it's really great. It's almost half off. I guess marketing strategy, I should have did 3.14%. Uh, whatever percent off but that's you guys are worth way more than that so yeah go ahead sign up for them if you want um and then yeah come watch them whenever you want it's great there are files included so you can get some of them like you get some of the designs in the 3d puff I believe there's ones for the text but there are handouts that are fantastic help me improve my um patches i change camera but yeah, so I guess enough of that, and hopefully Jeff comes back because I'm kind of just freewheeling this, and it's like a cluster here. So I got a thumbs up from Jeff as he came back, and I'm going to throw him in, and uh, I'm going to get rid of this. So here we go. Hi, Jeff. You're on live. Now to you, Jeff. Oh, I got to bring you in. We got it. We're good. Never mind. <laughs> So I'm back. I'm just going to stick another patch on here. Um, I really do like to feel underneath for that seam when I'm putting these on. I have to make sure that it's actually centered and not optically centered because that's totally a thing. Make sure that I'm good. All right. So you're just going to be sewing this on. Um, we already saw you do that. So I got a couple of comments that came in while I was babbling on about stuff. Yeah, um, rock it out while I'm doing this. Pull them up real quick. Okay, so Sydney's saying, I do not use rayon. Get mad when I accidentally buy variegated and it's rayon. Um, I'm guessing there's someone walking outside my door and the dog is barking. Uh, so ignore that. Yeah, I bought Rayon um, because I had to do a patch that used Pantone, and it was like the perfect match. And when I tried running it through the Marrow machine, you have to go slower, and I didn't know that, and it kept breaking, and I got really frustrated. And I said I would never buy my deer again. And again, like I said, it's out there. Error. Um, so Barb is saying, Sydney, what machine do you use for bag making? Sydney's saying I use her genome HD9. I don't know what that one is, but it sounds fancy. Um, and now I just got a message or a phone call. We're just going to go ahead and 
ignore. Okay, he hung up. Anyways, uh, Dustin saying, hi, guys. Sorry, late day at work. Uh, well, a late day is better than no day, so that's good. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, Vimla saying, Matt, will you be able to add all that we purchased to our accounts so we can always refer to our webinars when we need to, please? Uh, yes, so if you purchase a webinar, you can always go back to it. Um, there is a link in your emails. I recommend you save them. If you lose them, that's fine. You can email us. We can give you the new links. Um, but yeah, you can come back and watch them whenever you want. Um, and then she also asked, it also helps to know what we purchased and what we didn't. Ah, I see what you're asking. So you want a way to see which ones you, ah, I got you. Um, I can say up to top, there is not a way that we can do that easily. Uh, we are working on something top secret that will answer your question or concern there, but uh, that's a little ways out yet. So stay tuned. Uh, Sydney saying, I am doing a great job. I appreciate the compliment. And uh, she said, Jeff, there are things called a tape measure with six exclamation marks. So, oh, for me just sticking it down? <laughs> I, I got one right here. It's 32 inches long on the table. Yeah, you just look at that before, calibrate your eyes, and then look at your hat. That works, right? Yeah. Right, and I think it's not like it needs to be surgically accurate. But <laughs> I could have probably done a little better. Uh, Vimla, yeah, said she's talking about the ones that she did. Yeah, so like I said, we're working on something that will show you which ones you purchased and give you a, kind of a, a different approach to the webinars. Um, coming soon. Itch. Soon. Coming soon. Maybe. We'll see. And then thanks for that. All right. And then we have Al saying, so there isn't a real reliable way to sew patches on with our embroidery machines. Um, so well, that's the thing that we didn't quite talk about a whole lot in the detail, but yes, you could. Now, I'm going to bring up us because I don't know if I don't like having my face not on screen anymore while I'm talking because this is weird. Um, to answer the question, yes, you can use your regular embroidery machine to sew the patch on. Um, the downside with that is that you have to hoop the hat, put it in, run your global or universal underlay uh, so that when you actually sew the border of the, the patch onto the hat, it doesn't distort and then get all like lopsided or whatever and look kind of bad. Um, so it takes a little bit of an extra setup process. Otherwise, we're this way. If you're good at operating a sewing machine, you can just punch through these really quickly. As uh, Jeff said before, he can really crank through. He's just trying to go nice and slow because he's on camera. And if he screws up, everyone will see the mistake, like what happened on my last live that we did. So well, just I mean, you have to throw in there, too, that if I go too fast and you guys aren't going to be able to... Uh to really watch what I'm doing. Yeah, it's um, not very good content. Yeah, so, I mean, I was able to, that was what, 10 minutes? Not even that, was spraying it and everything, so, um, and I don't think you thought that way. But yeah, if you're doing, I mean, I feel like if you're doing a couple hundred this way, maybe doing a, your embroidery machine would work too if you have the capability to hoop them fast enough and where one's running you have the next one or two already going and you can just quickly swap them out but well I mean, let me put it this way if i had an eight head machine and 200 hats to do i would be using the eight head yeah. because you can hoop everything you can get them tacked you need people to help you get them tacked down initially but you know it, it's just it's the volume thing so, I mean, I can do probably a hundred hats pretty easily just sitting down and running through them if they have to be able to stick backing on them. Um, but I can't 
hand it to my wife and say, can you do this? Or another operator and say, can you do this? Without them learning how to do it, you know, learning how to sew on a post bed machine. Because it is different. When you're able to put your hand all the way around the object and hold it differently, it's a different feel than when you're just pushing it in a regular sewing machine. On I would, bed. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, I know that was one thing when uh, I was doing uh, my patch, if it was like a weird shape patch, um, like for example, like this one here, I would have to sew that by hand and that was a pain. So what I did is I made a jig and used my embroidery machine, but the amount of time it takes to set up the tooling for that, it, if I'm doing five of them, I can crank that out on my Juki in a couple seconds per patch or minute. Yep. At but it would take me probably about 20 minutes to set up a design and it, yeah, it's not worth it. So yeah, if you're doing less than 20 hats, it might just be easier to do it on the post bed, but, or some really funky designs. Well, and I mean, I can sit here and sew patches on while the machine is doing something else. Yeah. So it just, it depends on how many you have to do and how much time you have. And you know, the, the setup work for a file <laughs> to sew it on your machine, it, it takes a little bit because the, the sheet, you know, if you try to sew a, an actual square, like a flat square on a hat, you're not going to get a square. It's going to kick out a little bit at the top because of the curvature of the hat. So when you do these, you actually have to make a weird shape so that it can finalize as a square and go around the inside of the patch and look good. Otherwise, it's going to come out kind of like a trapezoid and come back in. You're going to run over your border and come back in. So the setup to do it on an embroidery machine, just to, to get a file that you know is going to sew out really well, it, it takes a little bit of trial and error, and you're going to throw away a hat or two. Yeah. I, I know we're kind of sidetracking from the question, the question, but uh, yeah, the other thing is, too, your embroidery machine's your biggest money maker, I would, I would say. So if you're making patches to sew in hats, you could be making patches while you're sewing the previous batch onto hats. And when that's done, you have more patches or you can do other orders with it versus tying it up. So. Yeah, but I mean, you can sew them on with an embroidery machine. Maybe we'll set up another day and um, I'll generate a file that we can sew them onto the to a hat with the embroidery machine. You can do it, it, it just, it, I, I can honestly tell you the times that I have done it, it's been out of necessity and not because I really wanted to do it that way. <laughs> Um, so let's, I'll go with that. Um, okay. And then next comment, we have Cindy rolling, laughing and crying. Love it. Um, and then, uh, she also asked on that machine, what type of needle? I don't. So it's not, it's not a DBXK5. It's, um, uh, I don't, I can't even tell you off the top of my head. I'd have to go and find the package, which is not even with the machine. I had to hold up the needle and look at the number off of it. Um, but it is not as it's not as embroidery needle. It, it's a sewing, industrial sewing machine needle with a round shank. Um, and it, I want to say it's longer. It's got a longer shank than an embroidery needle. Um, okay. But it, the size is a it's a one hundred. Okay, and then Al saying, I have a post bed, but the motor is extremely fast. Is there a good motor that would be better to use that will allow the torque without going very fast? Sounds like you have a clutch motor. Um, so if you have a servo motor, um, there's actually a dial on there that you can turn and you can set it. Um, I think this one's set at 3,500. You can turn it down, I want to say, to 300. So you can just dial back the... Uh, the speed of it and it kind of lowers the sensitivity of the um the pedal so that you can go slow um so if you don't have a servo motor i would recommend getting one most most machines that i see sold right now unless if they're a used machine they come with a servo motor i'm not aware of any new machines that come with clutches and it's just because the there's they're a lot more efficient you get a little bit more torque and um, yeah, it's less weight and quieter and just overall they're they're better. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get you a link to a servo motor that a lot of people recommend because I actually just bought this one, I think, two days ago. Um, here we go. I'll throw it in. Sure. The 
Did you get another sewing machine, Matt? No. Oh. He winked. No, there's no. I got I got an idea in mind. Uh, the, the one right. I just posted is a. It's one that has a needle positioner. Um, so my idea is to replace the one that's on my Merrill machine because after I got my Juke key, I love the fact that when I stop, I can program it to lift the needle up. So I want to have it when I release the 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 foot pedal. It brings the needle up so I can take the patch out a lot easier and I don't have to manually crank it. It'll save me like three wrist rotations every single patch, which adds so much time when you're doing a couple you know what, Matt, You would have never known that unless if you tried, <laughs> you saw Adam's. Yeah, Adam's, Adam's, Adam's double needle sold me on the Juki behind me. Uh, Jeff found it on Facebook Marketplace as I was driving back from his place to mine after I dropped the double, double needle off. And I messaged them, like I pulled over, messaged them, like, I will buy it um, tomorrow. I just got to get back to the state. And then, yeah, I bought it the next day. And there I wasn't a lot it. of contemplating that purchase, was there? You were like, yeah, no, let's get it. Like, I don't care. I don't care how much it is. I got it. Because uh, it was in Omaha, brand new. It wasn't even fully set up yet in their house. Uh, unfortunately, events for them. But yeah, it was lucky for me. But, um, how much time does it save you sewing patches versus yeah. your old sewing machine? Oh, boy, it's ridiculous. I mean, my old one is just an old, well, it's not old, but uh, the Singer HD 4000 series or whatever. Yeah, it's it's not the greatest, but it, it works. It's just clipping clipping your tails and everything. It, it takes time, which was unbelievable how much time that takes. But like that I just did. 20 or so of these patches and sold Velcro on uh, last night. Actually, it was like 30, and it was in the time it would have take, taken me to do like 15. What's the old one? Yeah. Like this, it would be really, really nice to have that on a post bed because as you guys saw, when I got done, I had to like roll this out and pull it out of the way and then clip the thread to yep. get the bobbin thread. And, and with that, you, I would just be taking the hat off and setting it down and starting with the next one because they do auto lock stitch so you don't even have to to mess with putting your hand on the thing, it's all done on the foot pedal. It's really smooth. Right. And then Alice saying thanks. Yeah. Okay, it came up. And then Barb is saying my industrials have the servo motors. Love them. Yeah. When I bought my Merrill machine, it came with a clutch. It's like this is garbage. Whoever invented this sucks. Got myself a servo, and it was smooth sailing from then after a few more months. But uh, okay. Baby Jean saying it's funny because that's why I bought a separate embroidery machine to start with was because I kept thinking that I could be sewing something regularly while the other one was embroidering. Yeah, make, makes sense. Get another machine, uh, a separate machine. Um, like I was looking at buying the the Roland whatever for stickers, the, the printing cut. Yeah, but the a lot of the reviews said that they kind of suck because you while you're printing one, you have to wait for it to cut it and you can't print more. And it just, it makes more sense to have a printer and then a dedicated cutter. So it's kind of the same principles, but not really, but we're just going to. The only nice part about that is you're saving space. Rather than having yeah. two physical machines, you have one physical machine. It's my number one problem. As you can see, I don't have much, much room left. Um, I'm, I'm running it out. I'm running out of it as well. In fact, my heat press is on a cart in that room over there. And the post bed I actually put on wheels. So I can, um, it's got some casters on the, on that side that I can push down and roll that thing into the other room too. So sometimes they switch places so that we, we're able to have enough room to get around and make videos, but it's. Yeah. And I wonder where you got that cart from because the cart was right behind me taking up too much room. It's like, Jeff, come get this thing. Cause I, I can tell you the guy I got the heart, the cart from, he's a pretty good guy. I'd go to his house again and get another card. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Sydney asking what kind of juke you have. This is the DDL 9000 series. It's got... Is it the C? It's, what? Is it the 9000C or C9000? Yeah, 9000C SN or something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like the second, their first generation or something. There's a newer one, which is like completely touchscreen on the front. Mine has buttons. Um, which I think I would rather prefer, but, uh, 
it, it's it's awesome. There's so many features I don't know how to use, but like I can literally program it with my phone. Like say I'm doing, like, if I was doing like shirts or something, like actual manufacturing of shirts, I can set up settings on my phone, tap it against it, sync it. And then if I have a different job, like I'm selling Velcro on, I can have a profile set up for that. And then it changes all the tension and everything. It's nuts. I don't, don't use that though, because I don't know what I'm doing, but um yeah it's awesome love it yeah like you can set your presser foot the amount of presser foot pressure on there so your stitch length you can all do that per material and just tap it to the machine and it changes it um which is why i really 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 want one <laughs> um but there you know i i have one and it works and it, it does okay but it, it, yeah, yeah it's but it's, and the best part is it lifts the presser foot up, pulls the needle out when I'm done. And then when you rock the foot pedal back, it lifts the presser foot up no matter what. And when you rock it all the way back, it trims it. It's perfect. Love it. But um, before we digress too much more, because I have... Wait, hold on. If any representatives from Juki are here, I think that we need to be sponsored. <laughs> Sign right there. Yeah, we just, we'll just go out there, you know, sponsor us. We would like you to... Um, Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be um, nice. Because we uh, like your products, but uh, Betty Jean asks, let's grab her question really, really quick. So uh, where are the inverter machines? Are they in a different room? Mine is over my right shoulder right there. Um, and Matt's, yours are that way. <laughs> There's one. Yeah, same room. They're all yeah. the same. I got uh, my happy, uh, my Recoma. This isn't working very well. Let's see. Happy, Recoma, and then another happy over there. No. Um, but I think uh, we're going to pull up this question. I'm looking for a thought control embroidery machine. So it just takes what I thought. And I want it the first time. Yeah, I don't know if I want it to read my mind because there's going to be some really weird things stitched. Just patches that we just randomly show up. It'll just, yeah, it'll, I'll be like in a straight jacket in some psych ward or something, probably. <laughs> but uh, um, so I think that's probably where we should end it. Want to bring up yeah. one more thing yet? Um, I'm going to go ahead, click this, click that, um, actually, click this because it actually went to the right thing. So it's that time of the year again. Um, this is the second installment of the annual uh, Embroidery Nerd t-shirt. Uh, sorry, it's not a wet t-shirt contest, but um, we can see if I scroll down, there's a little ticker here. Um, 16 days left. Um, go ahead, pick up your shirt. Uh, just helps with uh, keeping this stuff free, I guess. This is the best yeah. way to put it, right? Because, I mean, we got the website, give a bunch of stuff away. Like, uh, if you um, share stuff on the Instagrams, you can get a little nerd star. I don't know if it's going to focus, but, um, yeah. Pack them in, yeah. Mail them out every once in a while, or uh, who knows? Maybe one of these guys will hit you. I don't know. We did just give one of those away yesterday. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, but yeah, it, it, it helps with all the costs that we incur. Um, you know, the, the platform that we use to be able to stream all this to Facebook and YouTube simultaneously, all of those things, um, it just it basically helps us cover the costs that we're paying out. Uh, so, and these that, are actually made by uh, Justin Armenta, one of the other head nerds here um, yeah. at the embroidery shop. So. Yeah. So they're they're contracted through Justin. Um, his company is going to be making them, and then of course they'll be fulfilling them. Um, this year we did add a different uh, a different shirt um, based off of some feedback that we got. We we now have the same the exact same shirt that we had last year, and then we've got one that's uh, Justin says it's a little bit softer, um, and so. I take his word for it because I don't embroider a ton of uh, shirts, so um, he he knows better than better shirts better than I do. So we just go with uh, with what they are. But I want to say that they were the number one selling shirts um, for the distributors. 
But uh, as you guys may notice, it is a different design. Uh, it's not the same design that we did last year, and it will not be the same. This will not be the design that we do next year. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you see a shirt that you really like the design on, you got to make sure that you get it because uh, you're not going to have a chance to get that design again. So um, just want to throw that out there too. Uh, I don't think that's the right color. That's supposed to be canvas red. <laughs> we'll throw popcorn at Justin. If he's watching, we'll just make him fix it. But, oh, not yeah. one. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So, anyways, we've, we've opened that back up. It will be closing on the 31st. So if you guys want to make sure that you get in on that, we'd really appreciate it. And you can also wear those around. If, um, when we do go to trade shows, we look for people that are wearing them. And if we find someone that wears them, they might get a little bit more uh, swag. So I will say uh, Cindy has a uh, had a question about the noise of the machines. Um, my wife, she our living room is directly above my embroidery room. And she cannot hear the machine run. So uh, it definitely doesn't bother my neighbors. <laughs> That's what the dogs are for. Yeah, they bother them. But, yeah. uh, I, I'm going to pull in Adam here real quick. And he's going to say his little spiel. He's got he's got an unpaid advertisement that he wants to run on. So I'm going to move out of the way here. Okay, we'll, we'll make him full screen. Can we zoom in on his nose here? Only if you use the other camera, apparently. Here, sit. Okay. Okay, so first, hi. <laughs> and in case you have not heard, uh, hey, you uh, just killed your microphone. You have your desktop muted, so. <laughs> okay. There. there we go. Technical difficulties. Okay. So start over. Okay. So first, hi. Hi, Adam. <laughs> and in case you who have not heard, me and Alexis Galloway from So Sweet Academy have teamed up to make an Easter bunny and Easter egg. Hold on. Let me get it up right side up. Uh, ship and stitch, and the, and there are going to be di different sizes of eggs, different colors. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be a Zoom class on how to sew the bunnies and eggs together. And they're in the hoop. And they are in the hoop. And I look for, and the disc, okay, for, okay, sorry. The discount code is Adam. And, and, be in this class and I will be in the class. Because I digitized. Because I digitized the design. Uh-huh. And we will put a link for that we, in the description. Yes, we will put a link for in that the chat. in the chat. Uh -huh. And I hope to see you there. Okay. You got it. All right. No, no trouble there. So, um, uh, we did have a question that I want to pull up real quick. I think it's absolutely. important to pull up. Uh, we got. Are the sh embroidery nerd shirts embroidered or printed? They are definitely printed. Um, yeah, they are. They're you know they're t-shirts, and I don't want a full front design embroidered <laughs> t-shirt. That's me personally. Um, and so they'll be they'll be screen printed by Justin's company. So um, I will add though on Adam's ship and stitch. The reason why it's called that is because. Alexis will take all of the materials. She'll gather the fabric, the stabilizer, 
um, everything that you need to be able to do that project. She'll put it in a box and she'll ship all of that stuff to you so that you have it on hand uh, for when it's time for the class. And then during the class, it's a Zoom class that everybody is, uh, everybody's in, you could be on video and she goes through and everybody embroiders it at the same time. So um, I've done one before um, and I really liked it, but uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that little tidbit because he gets nervous in front of the camera and forgets stuff. But it will be on April 2nd. April 2nd, if you miss it, there is a, a recording for it too. So you'll be able to view that as well. Um, and I think that covered everything. We've got the shirts. Did we miss anything, Matt? Just pull this sucker back up once more. Okay. Um, go ahead. Yep. That's our business or page of the week. It's the first installment of it. Maybe your page will be up next. Uh, I didn't mention this before. But the kind of idea of this is the more people that like them um, or your page, the more your page gets shared, which then makes you get more business. So it's kind of you follow them. They follow you. We have this huge, massive social media presence and we all profit from it. So I like them, nominated them for first, and then we can nominate other people for next week and we'll just keep a rolling chain of whatever. So link is in the comments below or you can... Uh, use the little short link that we have there. Go ahead, just like and follow them. And that's all you gotta do. You don't have to buy anything from them if you don't want. Although you probably have their bobbins on your shelf. So, yep. There you go. That's pretty much it. And uh, some of us wake up at three in the morning. So we don't really want to stay up too late. But, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're ready to close out. I, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? I, I don't think so. I mean, we talked about the shirts, if you're the ship and stitch. The, yep, you've got your there. design of the the company of the week that we feature, yep. and I think that's it. So um, I'll go ahead and close this out. I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works, and that is Matt Enderly from Hatch Rays. And over there off screen is Adam Fuller from BJJHats.com. And we're all here representing the Embroidery Nerd. Uh, you guys have a great night.